A very good morning and welcome to this morning's update here from the People's Progressive Party Civic. I'm joined this morning by Joe Hamilton, a former member of parliament and of course a candidate of the People's Progressive Party Civic in the March 2nd general and regional elections. Joe, good morning and welcome to the program. Hi, Eddie. Good morning and good morning to all the viewers. Over the last uh, 24 hours or so, Joe, we have had quite a lot of developments. Um, more and more, the world is condemning the actions of low infield, the attempts to disenfranchise um, over 115,000 people, and also um, attempting to rig the elections in favor of the APNU AFC. You have been tracking the developments. Your, your opening thoughts with regards to what has been happening in, in, in recent hours. Uh, Eddie, the, the, firstly, I, I would want to, to, to deal with this uh, vicious and vulgar attack on the chair of CARICOM, uh, the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley. And to make this point, uh, just to remind viewers, uh, the people who are suggesting that she is meddling and CARICOM is meddling. I would just wanna put this in perspective and take your mind back. David Granger asked me immortally to, med to meddle. That is how Mia Motley is involved in the process. If you recall that after the failed attempt several times, to swear in Granger under the fictitious um, Mingo's declaration from District 4. The report says that he asked Mia Motley uh, to make available a CARICOM scrutinizing team or observing team to do a recount of Region 4 because he didn't want to be sworn in under a cloud of elections uncertainty and the allegation of rigged election. So that is how Mia Motley doesn't, didn't impose herself on Guyana or on the body politic of Guyana. She was asked by the caretaker president to get involved. Our, ourself and four other prime ministers came here to speak to the political leaders and they committed to sending a team to supervise the recon. What that suggested since then is that evil Granger himself did not have faith in the declaration done by Mingo. That's the first point in all of this. Of course, we know it was a fraud. Second point is he committed to um, accept the results coming out of this recount supervised by CARICOM. And thirdly, for viewers to remember, when the People's Progressive Party, Civic and all stakeholders agreed to his request of CARICOM, they suddenly shifted the goalposts. We moved from region four to do a review or recount of all the districts. So I just like to start with that, that CARICOM is here, CARICOM is speaking, the chairman is speaking, the CARICOM um, observer report spoke, all of that has happened because David Granger asked for uh, the intervention of CARICOM. Eddie, you know, something, I, 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 a very contentious and uh, controversial statement I would want to make is this. I suspect in Granger's madness in his head and the APNU AFC uh, racist intent, I suspect when he reached out to CARICOM, he saw them as a member of this so-called Black Brotherhood. And it's something I must say. And so for them, if you note their language, 
these people have disappointed them. And I think, I think either Lois or, 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 or Ains or, or Burke, some one of them made the point that CARICOM um, uh, uh, basically to say that, listen, CARICOM has, has not delivered what they thought they would have delivered on behalf of the Black Brotherhood. I am paraphrasing what what, what, what is it. And it is like Eddie and many viewers who have, are of African descent, we would have experienced this. Where are we in a public place and up to AFC people, supporters, members, they're having a conversation. The most outlandish things they're saying about Barra Jack View and Irfan Ali and the PVP civic. And they are saying that because their expectation in their head is that every person of African descent who are in this public space, they are PNC people. You understand me? So that, that is what uh, drives them. You're in a taxi, you're in a minibus, you're in a market square, and you hear these conversations. You're in the line of the bank, and they speak all of these crass and unkind and and. and and vulgar and profane things. And they say, listen, all of us are one family here. That is basically what they're saying because you and I, we look like them and, and, and we are of African descent. And I'm sure many of the viewers who are listening to me this morning, they would have had that experience. Sometimes what we do is that we don't even hear them. We stay silent. And sometimes if you respond, they're shocked to their core that you of African descent has taken a PPP position and you have condemned them. And so I'm saying that to say that Granger right down through the process, he continues to talk up CARICOM as the most um, important uh, interlocutor. Your uh, viewers will know that since the report came out, he has not mentioned a word anymore about CARICOM and the CARICOM observer team. And he had a lot to say, a, a lot to say, remember, uh, on the Law and Field Force report with his fictitious permutation, Granger says that he accepted that uh, fiction from Law and Field. So I thought I, I say that for viewers. Uh, to get an understanding why I believe Granger and, and, and his cabal, they're bitter with Motley, they're bitter with the CARICOM leadership because they see them as not fighting or representing in their head what they call this Black Brotherhood, where all of us of African descent, we're supposed to slavishly uh, support uh, vile and um, crooked and, 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 and dictatorial behavior of a leader because our four parents and his four parents came on the same slave ship. And so for people like me and you, Eddie, and, 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 and by extension, all the people of African descent who support the People's Progressive Party Civic, they don't understand that for us, we have been emancipated. No one could hold us to that guilt trip. We make our decision and our judgment based on the best party to develop this country with a program and a plan. And I thought I say that so that viewers could get an understanding of why the bitterness. Remember they discarded Carter Center and all the other people because for them, they are white people and they're colonizers. And we couldn't depend on them to bring home the bacon for us. Let us throw all our weight. Let us throw all our belief and our hope in the extended Black Brotherhood of the Caribbean community who will issue a report uh, to suggest the narratives we were carrying um, are the correct thing as regards the, the, the March uh, second election. The other thing, Eddie, is this. You see many of the APNU AFC supporters, 
Nagamoto and the likes. They talk about the colonizers meddling, the Americans and the British and, and the Europeans and whoever. And the hypocrisy is so stark that people like Nagamoto, he has a green card belonging to the colonizers country. His daughters, they live in the colonizers country. He and his wife, they have green cards for the colonizers country. His grandchildren, they, they, they live happily in the colonizers country. And many of them, their children goes to university in the colonizers country. When they are sick and unwell, they go to the colonizers country to deal with their medical issues. In the case of Nagamutu, when his heart hurt him, he goes to the colonizer country. So, so the point I'm attempting to put before viewers is the hollowness and the hypocrisy of these people that they condemn what they're beneficiaries of. In the case of, of, of what's his name? David Hines, he lives in the colonizer's country. He makes his living from the colonizer's university, Rickford Burke. He live in the colonizer's country. Mark Benchkop, he live in the colonizer's country. And many of them that are on social media, many of them, they live in the colonizer's country uh, illegally. In, 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 and they have a lot to say about the colonizer. You, you understand what we have here? It is people who are beyond redemption. You can't, and that's why what we do now is focus on taking government and put ourselves in a position to execute the programs and plans for the development of this country and the people of this country, because it's a wasted exercise to deal with people who are beyond redemption. And that is what these people are. They are beyond redemption. But still, we have to continue to fight them because we have to continue to ensure that dictatorship does not implant itself in this country that we love so much. Um, Joe, you, you touched on a very important point earlier. Um, you started by mentioning the attack on Prime Minister Motley. And, and one would recognize there is a pattern. Um, former Prime Minister Bruce Golding, former Prime Minister of Barbados, Owen Arthur, um, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. They have attacked all of them. They have praised, like you said, the CARICOM team and Granger said they are the most um, legitimate interlocutor. But when the report came out, the attacks started on the CARICOM team. Now that Prime Minister Motley would have spoken, um, the attacks and the very vile attacks launched against her. The ABCE countries yesterday released a joint statement where they reiterated the, the position that the data from the recount, the ballots that were validated through that recount exercise must be used as the basis for a declaration. They are being attacked as well. The Commonwealth Secretary General released a statement, she's being attacked. So there is a pattern of attacking every person that you know, speaks out um, about the atrocities they're trying to, to force on, on the Guyanese people. Um, the issue is though, that it, it comes over clearly as desperation and as a group of people in the APNU AFC who is willing in the thirst for power, they're willing to isolate themselves from the world and by extension, that could lead to the isolation of Guyana from the rest of the world. Eddie, Eddie, why they continue to go down that road and hold on, is I have said several times that the great fear is prison time because they know more than we would ever know. The type of corruption, the scope and the scale of corruption they were involved in and are involved in even up to this late hour. Even up to this late hour, after you had any elections, 
you had a result of an election, you had a recount of the election re results, and you have a report, they still continue their merry way, giving out lands and contracts uh, to people like if nothing uh, really has happened. So it all has to do with continuing to, as far as practicable, they will push this uh, to, to continue to um, exercise jurisdiction over the state um, coffers so that they can continue to benefit themselves. That, that is what is happening here. And what is sad in all of this, Eddie, is that we find um, now that in my uh, estimation and suspicion that you find um, members uh, of the judiciary apparently are participants in this whole scheme. And that is very much disturbing, you know, because if you, if you follow uh, what happened uh, last week, you would see that this was a project orchestrated and um, corroborated together. And the, the fact that um, Loinfield took that position he took last Thursday when he was to present his report and so forth, is that he knew that what would have happened at, 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 at that court. And secondly, the fact that uh, yesterday uh, he submitted his report uh, to the chair, utilizing in the first paragraph this perverse um, ruling from the court. That is what he, sub he, he didn't utilize the laws and the constitution to start this conversation. He didn't utilize the representation of people act. His first paragraph spoke to that court ruling. And therefore, for me, it is more than just law and field running wild. It is a, <coughs> excuse me, orchestrated attempt by agencies, uh, for that matter, uh, by members in different agencies and arms of government to rig an election. That is what it is. We, we have enough information since this 3rd of March or thereabout of the most senior people in the police force who are, who are participants in this um, attempt to rig this election. And therefore we see, um, and I, I, I mean, it cannot be sugarcoated when you, you, you have this that the fact that APNU and its leaders and even the, 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 the quote unquote attorney general went out there to make this point by giving false hope to the supporters that this court, this Caribbean the um, Court of Appeal is the final court to deal with this matter. It means that they're throwing all their eggs with the decision that they know would have come to protect them. Uh, that is what that is what has happened. And you and, and no way, no way, no how anyone can convince me that the judges who ruled that way on that court, they're not and were not in a, a participants in this uh in this uh last the scheme that, that was developing. Because they 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 they, they know better. But deliberately, uh, you find all the legal people at New AFC. They're misreading the law just to have this matter stay in Guyana because they feel comfortable with this matter staying in the Guyana court system at the level of the Caribbean, uh, of the uh, court of appeal. And for you young people, you can now understand when. Uh, Elderly people spoke to the issue of the PNC flag flying together with the national flag on the Court of Appeal. I mean, this is what is happening here. It is happening, but without a symbol of a flag. Uh, and because everything was supposed to flow from the celebration of, of APNU AFC supporters uh, when the court ruled 
about uh, rewriting the constitution by putting in valid, suggest that they believe and they were sold that, listen, this thing will end in our favor by this court ruling. And the other important issue is, is at least one judge uh, who ruled perversely, you recall, attempted again with a no confidence motion to rewrite the constitution by putting absolute before majority. So this can be coincidence. It means that you are clear how perverse they will be once these cases that are constitutional type that borders on politics go before them. And a lot of viewers didn't understand. Uh, you know, people thought with the Ulitomore matter, there was a unanimous um, decision. There wasn't. Reynolds ruled that that um, what's his name had jurisdiction to hear the matter. It was not a unanimous decision. Go back and look at the ruling. He ruled that all the had jurisdiction to hear the Ulitomore matter. And so you're, these things are not coincidence. No one can tell me that these things are coincidence. And so we have to be fighting every segment, every facet, every arm of the state GCOM, uh, you know, the, you can spend a day talking about uh, the leadership of that secretariat. You can spend a day talking about the fraudsters like Vincent Alexander and, and his crew, you know? So we have to be fighting and, and, and we thank our supporters and members, people in diaspora, international community, and all of those people who continue to support us in this fight because the fight is not just a political battle. The fight is a fight fighting several arms of the state who are complicit in this uh, attempt to deny the people their wishes of a government of their choice. Uh, Joe, you touched um, earlier on the issue of corruption and, and may, that may be um, one of the main reasons why they are hanging on to power. Um, let us talk a little bit about corruption in government, and we can go as far back as um, maybe 2016, but I want to focus maybe on the last few um, months or so, at least just before and just after the elections leading up to, to even a few days ago. And the pattern that you see there, it is just a small group that is benefiting. Let us talk a little about that. Yeah, the, the point is, you know, I feel sad at you. I, I tell you the truth. I, 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 I cannot bring myself to be bitter and angry with the ordinary supporters of APNU AFC. I cannot. The misguided people. Because I pity them in large measure. I pity them. Because some of the people who are out there, they don't have at home, bread in their bin for their children. Uh, they don't have a passage to utilize a minibus to get uh, to a place. They don't have a job, Eddie. They don't have a place they can call their home. Uh, they, so their children are incapable of attending school uh, whenever it opened, because they would not be able to put anything in their lunch kit. Yet, um, they're out there. And that is, is a pity. Some of them, Eddie, is out there under the banner of God. You understand me? For them, it's not politics anymore. It is not right and wrong. It is not goodness or badness. It is God as ordained. And oh, that one is a frightening one. Because if we follow a lot of the brutality and deaths by, of millions of people, <laughs> it was under the banner of ordained by God. 
we can go back uh, to, 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 to history under the ban of the Crusaders. We can go back uh, to the Romans under the banner of the papal decree. We can go back to the fact that me and you, we are sitting in Guyana, thousands of miles from where our four parents belong. That was under the banner of God. Because the degree was we were chattel, we were not human. So this issue about God is a frightening thing when it is introduced in politics. Uh, of late, we have um, the issues in the Muslim world under the banner of God. In the United States, you have the black, uh, the, the white um, uh, supremacist who is under the banner of God also. So, so you understand, I say that to viewers that you understand uh, the issue of, of under the banner of God. Hitler was under the banner of God attempting to create a super race. So now uh, I am told that all the arguments, it have, they have run out for the Apnu AFC people. And now it is under the banner of God. Everything else has failed, even the court uh, that they thought they would have gotten redemption from. And so I say all of that to say that I have pity more than anger for the ordinary supporters. I really have pity. Because whilst they're out there doing all of that, you have a man like Brian Tewari, who's a multimillionaire in American dollars, making more money on the backs of these people who cannot eat. You understand what is happening there? By a contract that somebody gave him $74 million more than what he asked for, even though he was already nearly $100 million over the engineer's estimate. You understand? And you have the likes of Upkinson, multimillionaire, who have been given large expanse of land. You have the likes of the Abode family from Trinidad, who are multimillionaires in the United States dollars, who are here taking up uh, tens of thousands of acres of our land uh, uh, in, in, in the presence of the ogre, and I can go on and on. You have um, friends of Armon and, and, and Armon himself participating in taking away via lands and surveys and uh, the river, the Demira River, and the, and, the, and the ocean at the front of, of, of Best Hospital. You understand you have a son uh, involved with um, Stanley Ming, uh, partnering with one of the most corrupt companies in the world, dealing with oil, um, inter oil, that decimated Angola and produced, as they say, the richest black woman in the world, the daughter of the Santos of Angola, whilst people are starving in that country. So that is the, the, the situation you have here. So what can we say to the ordinary people? The only thing I can say to them is open your eyes. Recognizing, recognize that you're not a beneficiary of this corruption and you will not be a beneficiary. You have not been a beneficiary of this corruption since Granger went into government. And as long, don't matter how long they hold on, weeks, days, you will not be a beneficiary. It is the likes of Brian Tiwari. It is the likes of Hopkinson. It is the likes of Joe Arman and his sons and his son-in-law who made millions of dollars securing the bond for Gaisuko that is yet to go to Gaisuko. So you see what is happening there? I have not called anybody benefited, um, Eddie, in East Rumbelt and West Rumbelt and Lane Avenue and Middle Road, uh, Buxton, Hans Grove, Golden Grove. You understand? Bartica. There are no beneficiaries 
for Bartica other than Hopkinson. I'm talking about the ordinary people in this whole um, situation here. And so sometimes you get real um, mad when you see some of these people who are uh, persuaded and influenced by the leadership of Afnu when they spew um, all of these nonsense. Let, let me, let me I, Eddie, in the old corrupt scheme of things, let me, let me also address in passing a matter. Every day, viewers, you would see um, the likes of Chris Jones and the thief man from Chronicle, what's his name? I never remember his name, uh, Eddie. Sherrod Duncan. Sherrod Duncan. And you have um, the one from Linden, uh, German Figueroa. You see them uh, spewing all kind of banality, racist cut off and so. What they're doing publicly is playing to the gallery of PNC to put themselves forward as contestant to be in the list of the 31 seats. That is all, that is what they're doing. They want to show the, the sanctimonious gangster that I am fighting for you down to the wire, James Bond and, and, and the likes. That is, so there's a contest. Whilst this is a public display, I can tell you there is a contest at Congress place where people are fighting for their names to be on that list, to be uh, extracted from GCOM, where at least two or three leaders of the PNC are fighting tooth and nail to be named opposition leader when we go to the National Assembly. So a lot of the things that are playing out publicly, they are things that uh, have direct bearing on their fight uh, in uh, Congress place. So, so, so we have to understand that um, what is happening there. But again, none of these um, people in the, in, the, in, the, in the villages, in the south of Georgetown, North of Georgetown, Agricola, I see they, they marshal a couple dozens of people the other day to come to Georgetown uh, in front of GCOM. They brought down five minibuses from uh, Linden. Um, whilst Linden, uh, people cannot eat. But that is the situation. Whilst we have all of that going, uh, Brian Tiwari and his children, they live, as the old people say, life in London. And you have Mr. Ram Moran, again, another multimillionaire, who um, $1 billion spent on a building that is 40 years old, owned by him, to be refurbished. Uh, and then he is to get um, $15 million a month um, rent on the building refurbished by the government. Uh, you know, it's the same scheme like the Larry Singh scheme with the drug bond. So this continue, um, lands that are give me, being given away. You have not heard that a dozen or a hundred people, ordinary people, they have been given house lots in this period. While some um, thousands of acres, tens of thousands of acres are given, given, being given out to persons who are multimillionaires. So it's a sad situation in that regard. We have already committed to the people of Guyana. All of those things will be reviewed and we will retake back all of those lands so that we can house our people. Now that is our commitment to the people of Guyana. We will not allow these um, thieves uh, to do that to the people of Guyana. When we cannot house our people and they have uh, tens of thousands of acres they have hold on to given through corrupt means. Um, you know, Eddie, I didn't know that one of the parcels of land that is being developed at the Abari Bridge belongs to David Patterson. I didn't know that. The one before we reached the bridge belongs to Joe Harmon. The one over the bridge belongs to David Patterson. So two cities were to be built. 
by diverting from the oil rig, the gas, no feasibility study to do with where the gas pipeline must land. Esequibo that is closer. Demerara, at least region three that is closer, was not taken into consideration. Region five, where you have to run more lines in a swamp, where it will be more costly, that was taken into consideration because Joe Harmon and the pretentious crook, I call him, and pathological liar Patterson, they were seeking to establish two twin cities, you know, like the American got twin towers. The men they were attempting to establish twin cities uh, on both sides of the Abari River. And I suspect the dilemma why they continue to wrestle to hold on the power is that they have already taken people money. I suspect that they have already taken investors money inside and outside of Guyana uh, to develop uh, these twin cities. And so, I mean, this corruption, uh, the type and scale we are seeing, Eddie, is we are seeing it from outside. Think about it when we go into government, where you will have ac access to all the documentation and you can also seek to find a paper trail uh, of the corruption. Think about what the scope and magnitude. They, they, you know, two weeks ago, they did the GRA under the hand of, 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 of its commissioner general when the conversation about, um, about the, the, the Sivan struck spending a day clearing out documents and computers and whatever and taking it to the dump site on the armed guard uh, a, a statement was issued but they didn't deal with the pertinent matters the pertinent matter was you didn't know that you had garbage in the gra all the time <laughs> uh, to get rid of why was it necessary to just get rid of it one day before um, you thought a declaration would have come because Lowenfield was to submit his report uh, the Thursday. Why the GRA, Mr. Commissioner, and you need to answer this. Why it is only the Wednesday before the Thursday, you thought that all the garbage that you had at GRA was to be removed by the longest truck Savons can find. Secondly, Mr. Commissioner, if it was garbage, why you need a harm guard patrol from your enforcement arm to shepherd this garbage to the dump site and oversee the discarding of the garbage? Why? I mean, garbage is garbage, Eddie. I'm sure, I don't know, Puran or Sevens or whoever come by you, uh, uh, you know, they come by me every Thursday. I've never seen a police patrol behind Puran. <laughs> you know, I've never seen a constabulary patrol behind Puran coming to pick up my garbage. Why armed guards, they have to take the commissioner general garbage to the dump site and oversee it's discarded. That is what the press release should have um, addressed. And therefore, no area is spared of this corruption. Uh, some people who you thought were, were, were honorable people. Uh, you know, there's a young man who I know, I know him through my brother. Uh, they study together as teachers um, uh, at the training college. Uh, the other Jordan, the red Jordan, as they call it. I saw him just a couple of weeks ago giving out contract to contractors uh, to install lights uh, on, the, on, on the West Coast, on, on the Irene. You understand what is happening here? Uh, 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 you know, the, the, the case where last week again, Thursday was a very important day last week because GRA 
is getting rid of garbage. And the Ministry of Public Health is rushing to pay contractors, cutting checks. Mr. Jordan is signing off. I'm talking about the other Jordan now or at finance to pay off the contractors at, at Rambaran building, 600 and odd million dollars of the 1 billion. BK contract for the riffraff at Myconi, everything. So there was a wild, a, a, a mad attempt, yes, last week to have all of these things out there, all of this corruption happening. But the ordinary supporter, they're not beneficiaries. The ordinary supporter, they have not received a mask from Green Janice government. They have not received a cleaning supplies from Green Janice government. They have not received um, hampers from Granger and his government. I, I would say this publicly, that I have had dozens of people who are staunch supporters of APNU OFC, who are members of the PNC, make contact with me to help them with hampers distributed by the People's Progressive Party today. I can say that publicly. So you understand what is happening here? Uh, so even if supporters are seeking redemption and solace uh, under the arms and the bosom of, 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 of the People's Progressive Party Civic, I, I don't say that to discredit the people. I am putting that out there so that people understand the hypocrisy and what is happening in this country as we speak. That is why I'm doing it. it it's not to, to, dis, to, to discredit or to say that the people are terrible, but it's to make the point that when they needed help the most so that they can feed themselves and their children, the party that they are prepared and willing to die for, I suppose, is not there to help to feed them. That, that is the fundamental point. Joe Hamilton, I want to thank you very much for joining me this morning uh, for this update. And of course, to our viewers, we want to say thanks for being part of the program. We're going to be back here about one o'clock with another update. Until then, we say thanks for watching and have a good rest of the day. I take care.